eradication is a very important goal. That's where you want to get to, that's the goal. We eliminate it in a certain area, we eliminate in another area. But it is the ultimate goal for public health to achieve eradication. So that's why we work towards that, an ultimate goal for public health. COVID has brought global health uh, to uh, front and center of uh, almost every country in the world. And if this will help us with uh, eliminating and hopefully eventually eradicating some of the infectious diseases of poverty, then you know, we've never been uh, more ready to do so. It's very difficult to achieve eradication. So far, we've only eradicated what smallpox. That's the only one. The smallpox stories, it's, it's really inspiring. In 1966, there were about 10 million to 15 million cases of smallpox in more than 15 countries. And so then, there were about 1.5 to 2 million deaths with the smallpox in the world at that time. The World Health Organization then decided, the assembly, that they should go on now for the eradication of smallpox. And so there were these mass vaccination campaigns all over. Numbers really, really reduced until when it got to 1977, that was the last case in Somalia was in 1977. So between 1966 and 1977, they were able in the mass vaccination campaigns to vaccinate everyone. And then three years later, in 1980, they declared smallpox gone. The second disease they thought would be eradicated was going between guinea worm and polio. And right now, polio is getting there, but it's not yet there because we still have two countries. Polio is a huge problem with the amount of disability and we had a vaccine. There was a lot of excitement that a vaccine was going to solve this problem. So I think it was looked at as an obvious next choice to, uh, to look at trying to eradicate. Je peux dire que c'était en 1987 que j'ai été victime de, de polio. J'avais 5 ans, je suis allée dormir et je me souviens que le matin, on est venu me réveiller. J'ai dormi plus que d'habitude. J'avais l'habitude de me réveiller à 6 heures, mais ce jour, j'ai dormi jusqu'à 10 heures. Les parents sont entrés dans ma chambre, sont venus me réveiller. Ils m'ont même tapé, tapé dessus. Et je leur ai dit, je ne ressens plus mes jambes. Bon, après, ils se sont mis à crier, à pleurer partout. On n'allait même pas dans les établissements vacciner les enfants. On ne venait même pas dans les quartiers vacciner les enfants. Donc, c'était différent. L'approche n'était pas la même. C'est pourquoi il y a moins de victimes de polio maintenant que par le passé. The World Health Assembly decided in 1988 that polio eradication was going to be launched all over the world. And following that, on the African continent, there was what they call a Yaoundé declaration to kick polio out of Africa. In polio, we've had to overcome a lot of challenges in countries. You know, there are many areas that have insecurity. There are zones where there's a lot of insecurity. So this has been difficult for 
the vaccinators to get into these areas, for the surveillance officers to get into these areas. And we started going country to country, seeing which countries had already gone three years without the virus. Nigeria, South Sudan, Central African Republic, and Cameroon were the last four. Finally, these four countries, they had a lot to do during the four you know, years until last year, 2020, they, were, they also were able to be declared free of the wild polio virus. And now campaigns are still going on. They went on for eradication in these areas. And now they're still going on so we can get rid of these circulating vaccine-derived polioviruses that are also paralyzing children. Getting polio out of Africa was a huge milestone. And now we're left with the residual cases in Afghanistan and Pakistan, um, places that have been under incredible duress. And this is a, a recurring pattern we see of places that are having challenges in eradication efforts, places that have, you know, conflict. Uh, and where people, there's a low level of trust. And getting to those final cases in that setting is hugely difficult and understanding and ensuring that your surveillance is strong enough to be able to do that. But we are, we are very, very close, uh, but we are not there yet. Currently, we just have one case in Pakistan in 2021. Compared to last year, we had a lot of cases. And uh, uh, this is uh, for the first time in the history, we are, are that low in the number. The success story lies in the gain which we have achieved over so many years. Now we are having only one case in Pakistan and two in the globe, like one in Afghanistan and one in Pakistan. So this can only be sustained if every child is vaccinated. Our morning, when we start, at 9 o'clock, we get a phone and we move to the vaccination site. When we move to the vaccination site, we are vaccinated. There are 2-3 social mobilizers who are aware of the community. This nationwide uh, campaign is really crucial for we people because we are going to vaccinate all the children across Pakistan, less than five years of age. And the target population for this campaign is 40.4 million children. And we are going to use 300,000 teams for this campaign. It's a huge number, but all of them are trained before we हम लोग जा रहे हैं एक कम्युनिटी सेशन के लिए ठीक है वहां पे हम लोगों ने मुफ्ती अपने इन्फ्लुएंसर को इन्वॉल्व किया हुआ है और कुछ ऐसी फैमिलीज हैं जो लास्ट कैंपेन में उन्होंने रिफ्यूज किया था वो कतरे नहीं पिला रहे थे As a surveillance officer, my job is to ensure that we do not miss any case and we give a true data set to the public and we detect every case. For uh, polio surveillance, we have two types of methods. One is human cases surveillance, which is done in the hospitals. They either automatically report any case less than 15 years of age having paralysis due to any cause. Once they report the case, we immediately go and investigate the case. If the doctor has not reported the cases, we have another system. Active surveillance system is that our doctors or government doctors are going to the hospitals and they are scanning the registers. And from their registers, if we find a susceptible case, which looks like an acute flaccid paralysis case, then we immediately investigate the case. If the case clinically looks like polio, then it's an urgency. We label the case urgent and we go to the field, the house of the child, then we leave everything behind and then we rush to the area, no matter how far it is. All this activity is supplemented by the environmental surveillance. Environmental surveillance is that we have selective sites across selective districts from where we monthly or fortnightly collect the sample. It's like we collect the sample in a bucket of water. And after that, if virus is found in that sample, 
then we again go back to that area and do the sweeping activities. We search for any potential missed cases, any potential children with low immunity profiles. The vaccine is not gonna get rid of polio alone, and you're not gonna get rid of it without the surveillance. And both of those pieces are incredibly difficult to do and are gonna take persistence, diligence, <laughs> to be able to see that through. So finally, coming down and closing down, it is only ref, uh, left in this region. So now the game for the globe is in the hands of Pakistan and Afghanistan. C'est celui qui porte la cause qui peut vraiment parler de la cause. Je suis victime du polio virus sauvage. Je vous dis, c'est une, c'est une, c'est une très 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 mauvaise épidémie. Et la combattre, c'est la plus belle des initiatives.